welcome to the bar because we're always raising it and this month we are talking to women in sport because they are always raising the bar Welcome to the second episode of The Bar where we are always raising it and today we are speaking to none other than Nadine de Klerk, a rising star in women's cricket. She is part of the Momentum Pro Tears setup. It's an incredible experience just to be talking to her right now, fresh, fresh from the Commonwealth Games. And I just want to say a warm welcome to you, Nadine. You are just 22 years old. You decided to go into cricket. When was it in your life that you were like, this is something that I want to do? Um, we grew up in a, in a very sporty family. Um, I had a few cousins who played professional cricket and my brother as well. So we always had family days where we all just played cricket against each other. And um, yeah, at the age of 11, I, I started playing for Northerns. I still did a bit, bit of everything at that age where you kind of just figure out what you want to do. So um actually decided only I think at the age of 17 that uh, when I got my first call up that I want to take cricket up seriously so um, very excited about the journey ahead and and so far it's been it's been really great at the age of 17 that's literally like when we started hearing about you that was when you made the decision <laughs> what other sports were you doing at the time yeah I played a bit of hockey um, and then I did javelin as well um, so I was very in between cricket and javelin at that stage. Um, I really enjoyed athletics. Um, and then, like I said, I was still doing a little bit of like, well, still actually hockey as well. So, um, but I wanted actually to go more into athletics. And then I did really well with cricket at that stage. So when I got my first call up, it was kind of like, obviously I've made it with the cricket, uh, but not as yet with athletics. So I decided to give the cricket a um, good run for its money. And um, so far, it actually worked out pretty well. A, a lot of athletes have backup plans. Do you have a backup plan or is this it? Sport is it for you? I hope sport is it, to be honest. Um, like I said, we, we grew up in a very sporty family. Um, a lot of my cousins and uh, have been in the cricket world or even sport in general. So... I would be devastated if it's not sport. Um, hopefully, even even if cricket um, ends or, or doesn't go the way it should, then hopefully into coaching or any sort of sport. I don't see myself working in an office for from seven to, to five um, like a normal person do. So, yeah, hopefully the sport works out because, like I said, we are absolutely crazy about sport and, and that's basically all we do when we wake up in the morning. It's We start with sport and we end off our day with sport. So... Yeah, hopefully it's, it's, it stays like that. It's so amazing that you have the support of your family because you talk about having a very sporty family and obviously they are very supportive of you. So when you said, look, I got this call up and this is the direction I'm going to move into, were they excited? Were they like, yes, or, or were they, listen, be cautious? What, what, what was their reaction? No, like they were very excited. Like I don't think I've ever seen my dad cry until that day. Um, so they were in tears and, and they were so happy for me. And I, ever since I made my debut, even till this day, um, like they, if, my dad still cries when I get selected. Um, <laughs> so for them, it's very special. And I think for me as well, um, just to know that I make them really proud, even if it doesn't always go, go as well, doesn't always go to plan. Like, yeah, they're really proud of, of well, all of us and, and the way we, we go about it and the support I get from them is, yeah, it's unexplainable. So it really means a lot when you, spend a lot of time away from home. I think that's always the difficult part about professional sport. I think like, especially the people on the outside or uh, the supporters, they always expect the best and always expect the wins and, and the players to perform really well. But I think it's just about trusting what, what you've been doing. I think um, as individual sports persons, we all have our have our own skill set um, and our own things that, that we try and do on the field. And we just have to trust that. I think... We accept that, especially in cricket, that you fail more times than what you actually succeed. Um, but I think, again, like I said, it's, it's just to make peace with that, but actually just trusting what, what you are doing and just work really hard and try and, and take care of your mental health. Because I know that is quite a big thing in professional sport is the, is the mental side of things. And I think from a personal point of view, that's something I try and take care of because I know how it can get when, when you're not performing as well non-selection and losing and all of those things um and and we've faced quite a lot of that this past uh, month or so um with our performances obviously so 
I think it's just about being really positive, um, facing the challenges the way every individual handles it. Everyone has their own kind of way of, of dealing with it, but really trusting that um, your process is, is going to work out eventually. And that's very true because you, you were talking about supporters and let's face it, supporters can be really fickle. Fans, they're loving you when you're winning and they're singing your praises, but the minute you're not winning, it's what's going on. Uh, I just keep it pretty simple. Like I just enjoy watching a lot of motivational stuff and I try and cut off the outside world if I can put it like that because I know there's always going to be critics and, and negative comments from the outside and, and even sometimes, you know, when it comes to um, family members who expect the best of you, there is sometimes... You know some some negativity or comments or um, whatever you want to call it. So um, I think I just try and kind of just cut it off and not listen too much to what's going on on the outside because it's always easier sitting on the couch and saying why are you not doing this, why are you not doing that. Um, I've done it myself. We sometimes watch the highlights and think why didn't I do that or why didn't I do that. But it's so simple when you sit on the couch. So I listen to a lot of music. I feel that's the, the best way to kind of just shout out the world and listen to a lot of motivational videos and write things down and, and that's just kind of my way of dealing with it look that is a very mature way i think that a lot of us could benefit from taking some of that advice and you know being able to cope with the the outside noise is is really tough sometimes but i really want to talk about the commonwealth games and i know that it didn't go according to plan i understand that for the proteas as a whole but you did have a moment where you shone and I do want to play this for you and hopefully we can watch this together. Starts with a wicket and a fabulous catch. Minion de Korea with a diving effort in the covers gives Nadine de Klerk something to smile about. <laughs> Straight back to Nadine de Klerk. And she has a double wicket maiden. The complete contrast to the other day against England. It couldn't be more different. <laughs> Wonderful bowling. Nadine de Klerk has found the sweet spot yet again. Ball just seemed to have shaped back in. She's been moving the ball away from the right-handers previously. What a bowling performance this has been for Nadine de Klerk. Love watching that. What is that feeling at the Commonwealth Games against Sri Lanka? And here you are taking the wickets on the world stage. We are all watching you. Yeah, look, um, let's be honest. After after that England game, I was actually very nervous going into that game. Um, when I actually landed that first ball, it was just a massive relief. Um, but it's always it's always nice to contribute to the team. I think especially, um, I think I mentioned it as well, we, we've had a really tough time as a team and um, we faced a lot of critiques and, and, and a lot of um, comments from the side. So I think um, obviously it's great to contribute um, from me personally, but I think as a team just to, to show up in that last game and, and put in a massive performance to finish off the Commonwealth was, was really special and at least something good to take home. Yes, because the team won by 10 wickets and you took three for seven in four overs. Those are incredible figures. And how often do you actually go back and analyze your performance? I actually do it a lot. Um, even if it's going well or not, it doesn't matter because I feel like, I think I said it as well earlier, when, when you sit on the couch, you see it a lot differently. Um, when you yeah. look at the highlights, you think, what on earth did I do there? Or why didn't I just do that? And it looks so simple, but I just think it gives you it gives you a very clear picture of things you need to work on or things that you might not pick up on the day or when you're in the middle, because it's a lot different in the middle. Um, but I actually love going back, watching those games, um, just to to analyze a bit, write things down. And I think it just helps a lot with, with performances and, and things you need to work on and, and small technical stuff or even tactical and fields and all of those things. So, yeah, I actually enjoy doing that and, and just reflect on the game. And so, yes, we have mentioned and spoken about how the team just in the most recent tour and in the Commonwealth Games not been performing as we expect because you've been winning. What do you think the reason for that is? Is, is it because the, the structure is different in our country? Is it because we haven't had competitive T20 tournaments happening in South Africa? We don't have a women's T20 league. Do you think that that has contributed to it? 
I think that would obviously make a difference. If you look at Australia and England and those kind of countries, they have all these big T20 tournaments where they where they play competitive cricket right throughout the year, where with us it is a bit different. But I, I, I do think as a team, we've been doing really well. Um, and I don't think anyone can take that away from the team. I think, like I said, again, with... with with the public or the or the people on the outside, it's it's easy to say now that there's something wrong with the team or with the coaches or with the electors or whatever because we haven't been performing as well against this. But it's only been this one series. If we're really honest, I think the team has been doing really well. But I think it would be even better for cricket in South Africa or women's cricket if there is a women's T20 competition like the men have or like, for example, the Big Bash or the 100 that's currently going on where those girls actually play competitive cricket. I think that will just close the gap between us and England and Australia and those kind of countries. But yeah, I think I don't think it's it's the main reason uh, for what happened the series that that's gone past. But I do think it it will definitely make it a lot better. No, I I think that it really does make a huge difference because these women, as you said, they're playing competitive cricket all the time. So when they come back into their national setup and they're playing a series. I mean, they have that game time, that time that they've spent in the middle playing at uh, the highest level in these T20 leagues. And it does, it certainly does make a difference. What would you like to see come out of cricket and Cricket South Africa here in South Africa with regards to women's cricket? We have the inaugural T20 league that's happening in January next year with the men. But what would you like to see happening with women's cricket? I would actually love to see something similar to to what's going to happen with the men or even any sort of T20 competition, especially T20 cricket. Um, I think, again, if we look at our record as a team, we are a very successful 50 over side, but not as successful with T20 cricket. And I think it's just a thing of we have to play it more. And I think that is just the way to go forward. I think definitely there has to be looked at something like a T20 league or a T20 competition uh, for the women where we actually get the best cricketers to play against each other and amongst each other so that whenever you get to international, because at this stage it's, it's very difficult because you play domestic cricket and once you get to international stage, it's just a whole nother level. And then you kind of have to figure things out first and it might take a while. Where with the English girls or the Australians, they play in the 100 and the big bash. So by the time they get to international cricket, it's it's not really a level up for them because they've been playing professionally for for years or even there's some of the England 17, 18 year olds that looks like they've played for years at international level and they actually just made their debut. But it's just because of the the professional or domestic competitions they have and the way they've they've actually played their cricket. So I think that is definitely something to look at going forward in South Africa is just to get our young girls and give them the same opportunity um, to actually play against the best in the country. And and hopefully when they get to international cricket, it, it will just close that gap a little bit. And do you think that there are enough young girls and women playing cricket in South Africa today and making it a, a, a career choice, so to speak? Yeah, I definitely think so. Um, I think there's um, a lot of, I think now, especially with, the more like we have a few more in, emerging tours than what we normally we only had one or two a year. We now they actually try and get it up a bit. So there's quite a few girls that's that's actually showing up their hands there. And then there's actually the the under nineteen World Cup that I think is massive as well, um, especially for for the under nineteen girls in South Africa. I think it's a massive opportunity to just put up their hands and actually feels what it feels like to be on the big stage. Um, and I think there's, yeah, like I, I think there's a lot of unheard names, a lot of young girls. That's that's definitely going to come through the rankings, hopefully soon. And um, hopefully there's more. I, I think the more investments and the more competitions and stuff there's going around in South Africa, the more girls will actually see that that they can do it for a living or they can take it up seriously. And and hopefully that will that will get even more girls to actually to actually take up cricket as well. If you had a plan for recruiting young girls in schools today what what would you put in place what kind of infrastructure would you like to see at grassroots level for women's cricket i think for, i think one thing that i i would actually like to change is like i don't think in in school cricket or there's no ladies cricket or girls cricket i think a lot of the girls has to well that is even when i was in primary school there was no girls cricket so the girls had to play with the boys and 
a lot of girls don't actually want to do that because it's just, you know, sometimes how boys can be. So I think we were only like two girls that actually played with the boys and the rest that actually wanted to play never played because they didn't want to play with the boys or they preferred playing with girls. And it's a lot different, obviously, um, men's cricket to women's cricket. So I think that is a good starting point is actually getting girls in primary school or show them that, you know what, girls can actually play cricket as well. It's not just the boys' sports. Like, you can play start, more girls', girls teams, so they can actually play against each other. Primary schools against each other, same in high school. And then it's just the thing of having, like I said, more of those domestic competitions so that a lot of girls, different age groups, different from different backgrounds, different skill sets, different levels, whatever, can all play against each other and actually learn from one another. And then hopefully that will create more teams um, obviously better domestic teams because now there's only a handful of girls that actually plays where if there's more girls the competition will obviously a lot be a lot harder so girls will have to work harder and there will actually be that little bit of competition in between players which I feel is really good to actually get the best out of the players so that's definitely something I think um, will make a massive difference in, in cricket especially in South Africa yeah 100% and when you enter the the setup, the Proteus setup, is there some sort of mentorship in terms of finances and mental well-being and media training, doing interviews like this, for example? Um, I definitely think so. I think, especially if you're not used to it, I, that's something I had to get used to because sometimes for, for us or our people that does not really speak English, it was quite <laughs> overwhelming to do these interviews with big cameras and a lot of people trying to to speak your best English. That was something I always worried about. But I know there's there's quite a few girls that actually had to get used to this the interview things and all the cameras and all the media. That is definitely something they get used to, especially like with the men when you play domestic cricket, the games get televised and there is all those things in place. But at our provincial competitions it's not the case there's no media or televised games or anything so that's definitely something to get used to and I also think obviously when you get to the international level it's quite overwhelming especially when when you were younger and you looked up to to the senior players that and now all of a sudden you're in the same dressing room um it can sometimes be overwhelming when you when you're new and you don't know how it works you don't know how things are going but I think you figure it out pretty quickly. I think um, we're all there for the same reason because we love cricket and we have a massive passion and um, we love representing our country. So we all just kind of gel into one and, and just go out onto the field and, and play as one. And what would you say has been the biggest challenge for you? I would say, weird enough, but I would say that the mental aspect of it, I think like you train a lot back home obviously that stuff on the body and and all of that but you at least with family but I think being away from home for so long is is really tough mentally at times especially like when the team's not performing as well or when you are as an individual are not doing as well and you have to face all those things and trying to figure out how to get back on board type of thing so I think it's a very big mental mental sport and I think sport in general but just to keep head above water focus on yourself and and try and and figure out your family life and the way how to get back on track or whatever so I think that is quite a big challenge but apart from that I think it's it's really special um to play to play professionally or to represent your country at, at in any sport at any level whatever I think it's really really special and I really enjoy every, every moment of it. I've been really trying to dive into the mentality of a champion. And for a lot of athletes that I've interviewed, they have spoken about sacrifices that they have to make, whether it's dietary, whether it's giving up love lives or not going to a jewel or not, uh, you know, enjoying themselves with friends as much. Are there those sacrifices that you've had to make? Definitely. I think especially when I started, I was obviously in grade 11. So, you know, it's just it's just before matric and it's it's all those things. And um, like you said, all your friends are, you know, living their best life, going out, you know, having a jaw here and there. And, and you kind of have to kind of have to back away or back off. And, and with, I think with a lot of things like whatever, whatever you do, like there's always a little eye watching you. So you have to be really careful about what you say, what you post, what you do, because um, there's just a lot of people always watching you. And 
with dietary requirements, it is like that. We, sometimes you always have it in the back of your mind, but a lot of times when family is having a braai or whatever, having a few drinks, and you just kind of like, you know what, I have a fitness test on Monday, so it's not the best thing to do um, with regards to family and all of those things. It's always something to keep in the back of your mind. So there has been definitely a lot of a lot of sacrifices, and I think with professional sport, it's it's not just sacrificing when you go away on tours. I think it's an everyday sacrifice. Every morning when you wake up, there's a lot of sacrifices that you have to make. But I think it's it's obviously a part of the journey and it's it's a part of the game. And it is actually something that I really enjoy because I feel it's about really testing yourself to be as disciplined as you can be, um, really focused and shutting off or shutting out all the things going on around you and really trying to just see your goal in front of you and just running towards that thing. So I think I actually really enjoy that. Um, structure and discipline in my everyday life so yeah that's not something that bothers me too much at the age of 22 you are so disciplined I can't even imagine I mean when you do treat yourself what is something that you're like oh my goodness you know I'm back from the Commonwealth Games I am going to do this so I'm going to eat this what is what what is that one thing that you look forward to um well we are meat lovers so for me, that's actually not the worst thing, but we couldn't wait to get back home just to have a braai with my family um, and have a couple of drinks. So that was the first thing. Well, actually, the first thing I ate when I landed in Joburg was a Steers burger because I absolutely <laughs> loved it. So that was the first thing. And then, yeah, then we just had a braai and, and had a couple of drinks. So that is just that's basically for me. But like I'm a massive meat lover. So. Whenever I get to to have a piece of meat, then then I am the happiest person on earth. So <laughs> then I don't actually <laughs> mind the world. <laughs> Look, I can't relate because I'm actually vegetarian, but I have a major sweet tooth. <laughs> so for me, it would be, you know, eating that chocolate, eating that pudding, like that's what it would be for me. But I'm doing that anyways. I should actually <laughs> cut back and be stricter. You and I, after the podcast, need to talk about the diet. And like maybe you can help me get into that elite fitness category because I need to work on my fitness in a big way. <laughs> I'm listening to you and I'm like, oh no, <laughs> nothing like me right now, <laughs> me living my best life. You know, it's just been such an amazing time having this conversation with you and just talking about this as your career. I mean, you are 22 years old. A lot of people at 22 are still trying to figure out what they want to do with their life and you you know what you're doing and you're very focused and you have goals but what are some of those goals for the future if there was something that you could do that you'd like to achieve what would it be a box that you personally would love to tick I think I have a lot of a lot of small goals I think like it's obviously very cricket specific but as an all-rounder you you want to be set in the team. You want to be a regular in the playing 11, those type of things. But I think, like, I would love to contribute more, like, with the bats. So I have very specific goals. I would love to score my first 50, hopefully very soon, uh, pick up a fifer. You know, those small little goals that can actually contribute to my career. But that's um, fitness as well. That's something that I really put a lot of focus on. Um, I want to be one of the fittest. I want to be one of the strongest um, so that I can last for a very long time and be as successful as I can. So hopefully all those things work out. Hopefully I get a nice nice rest now for these next couple of days. And, and then when I get back to work, hopefully all those things, um, I won't say become really easy because it's always very tough waking up at seven in the morning to go for a run. Um, but hopefully all those things I can achieve um, within the next couple of years and, and become one of the best all-rounders um, for my team. And is there anything that you never do before a game? Um, no, not really, actually. Or a uh, ritual? Well, <laughs> no, no, not. I'm very plain and simple. Um, I just like to, to go to bed early because sometimes I get so excited. I play the whole game before the time in my head. So I like to get to bed early. Um, normally before games, I do sleep with music on um, just to, I don't know, relax a little bit. And uh, I just fall asleep a lot quicker and a lot easier with music on. But that is pretty much it. I don't really have anything special or anything different um, on game days or before game days. It's just about, again, um, having clear plans and, and staying really focused and relaxed at the same time. And, and that's pretty much it.
And when you are playing, so stump mics, they pick up a lot of things. Do you ever think about that? I don't actually think about it in the moment, but sometimes a word or two does slip out. And I, I'm actually more worried afterwards about my parents hearing it on the TV than, <laughs> than getting fined. Because I know they will probably phone me after the game and be like, what on earth are you saying? <laughs> so, but sometimes in the heat of the moment, it does happen. I think it happens to all of us, even those you don't expect it from. Um, <laughs> it does slip out at, at times, especially when it's tough going and, and stuff. But I never think about it on the field. But I definitely afterwards think about, oh, damn, I hope my parents didn't hear that because I know they're following every single game. So hopefully they haven't heard anything this far. <laughs> um, <laughs> when we played the warm-up games and stuff, there was a few times where – we get overexcited or whatever. And the umpire <laughs> said, like, um, for now it's fine. But just remember in the official games, there's actually stump marks. You're not allowed to say that. So the umpire has actually reminded a couple of us a few times that remember in the game um, that you you can't say that or you, you won't get away with it. So I think maybe that helped um, her actually reminding me every time that please don't say it or <laughs> please just go away from the stump mark when you have something to say. Finances and funding for women's cricket do you think that the, that enough funding is being pumped into cricket and personally do you think that even having a professional contract do you think that that is enough or does one have to rely on sponsorship um i think i think it is definitely enough to make a decent living out of um i don't i know in the past um some of the girls actually had to work while playing professional cricket where now it's actually you can actually take it up full time and and make a decent um a decent living out of it so i think um it's it's actually not a not a bad option i think now with the with the with the domestic contracts as well and the high performance contracts i think it even it even draws more girls towards cricket uh, in the past, like I said, we didn't have that at all. So I think now with, with a few of the younger girls, it actually has a provincial contract. They can actually now work towards a high-performance contract. And then when they get there, they can work towards a national contract. So I think there's a lot more in place now um, for the girls. But I do think with regards to funding in, in women's cricket, I, I do think it can still be better. I definitely think like putting in a lot more effort with women's cricket, like I said, even if it's a domestic competition or, or just something um, similar to what the men's having, just to get the best of the best playing against each other more often, I definitely think that will make a massive difference as well. So I'm very excited for, for cricket in, in South Africa or women's cricket in South Africa. I think... Um, we're obviously in a like a rebuilding phase type of thing where there's a few new faces going around and and a few a few younger girls um you know um putting up their hands so i'm very excited to see where it's going to go in the next couple of years and it is very exciting because more and more people are watching women's cricket and i think there was a campaign hashtag one more fan and that is getting more fans more eyeballs on the game because a lot of the funding comes from that games that are televised and hopefully one day we'll have a domestic tournament and we televise it and we have all of that, the bidding process, just everything. I see that in the future and more girls saying, yes, I want to play cricket and I can do that professionally without needing a backup plan, without having to have a plan B and actually just play cricket and do the thing that I love. Because when you do something that you're passionate about, you put your all into it. And that's Definitely. essentially what you've done. You've put in everything into this. And I hear that from you. And I mean, by the time you are 30 years old, you'll be such an amazing seasoned cricketer with so many accolades under your belt. I mean, that makes me very excited to be watching you and just seeing you grow. For me, like you are 100% one of the stars already, but you are continuing to raise that bar and your star is continuing to rise and it's incredible to see. And before I let you go, I just so that everybody can know what is next on the agenda, on the roster for you and, of course, the Momentum Proteas. I, I don't know about any international cricket, to be honest, but I know that um, this will be the first time in quite a, quite a bit that we'll actually get to play a bit of domestic cricket. So I'm actually excited to join up with uh, Western Province again, where um, we'll 
some of the the momentum proteas will will meet up against each other for the first time in, in quite a bit so i think that's going to be quite exciting and i think for the younger girls as well to actually play against some of the national players against them with them um i think that is ideal for women's cricket um we need more of it where there's actually some of the national players at at the provincial level um to play against some of the young ones and and with them so pretty excited for that um and and hopefully it it goes well well thank you so much Nadine de Klerk for talking to me and for being a part of this podcast and also being an inspiration to- awesome thank you so much for having me hope you enjoy the conversation comment below and keep following on the socials